الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد وعلى آلہ وصحبہ وسلم اما بعد ایو الاحباب continue on in the second lesson of our book our study of the book with limited commentary by Shaykhana Shaykh Ibrahim Ibn Amr al-Rahayli Hafidh Allah Ta'ala The Shaykh discussed about the importance of and the title the, the title of the treaties is Kalima Mutabi' Li Sunnat al-Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wa Haras Alayha is the encouragement or basically like a word of encouragement to follow the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the encouragement to do so. And we mentioned some of the ayat, some of the verses from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which encourage us to follow the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For example, the first verse the Shaykh Minch Mention, Hafidh Allah Ta'ala, Ya yu alinina amanu, Atiyu Allah wa rasooluhu, Wa la tawallu anhu wa antum tisma'un. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you who believe, Obey Allah and obey the messenger, And do not turn away, And you are of those who hear, Or you, while you are hearing. And the various verses that we already mentioned that the Shaykh uses evidence to support the importance of following the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. And then the Shaykh said, Hafidhullahu Ta'ala, after mentioning the final verse that he mentioned, uh, was where the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And verily, this is my straight path, so follow it and follow not other paths. For they will separate you away from his path. This he has ordained for you that you may become pious. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to follow the straight path and his straight path. And the Prophet ﷺ read this ayat in an authentic hadith. And he drew a line. خَطَّ لَنَا رُسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ خَطْ خَطًا ثم خط على اليمين وعلى الشمال أو كما قال. so the prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام he drew a line in the sand in the dirt and then he drew one on the right and the left and he said هذا هي سبل. he said those are the various paths. or the first one he said when he drew the first line he said هذا سبيل الله this is the path of Allah. And then he drew those other two lines and he said, وَهَذِهِ سُبُلْ And those are the, the various paths. عَلَى كُلُّ سَبِيلْ مِنْ عَلَيْهَا شَيْطَانْ يَدْعُوا لَهُ O كَمَا قَالَ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم He said what means that on at the end of every one of those paths, those other paths, there is a shaytan that calls to it. And then he read the verse which we already mentioned, and وَأَنَّ هَذَا سَرَاتِ مُسْتَقِيمٍ فَاعْتَبِيُوهُ وَلَا تَعْتَبِيُوا سُبُلْ فَتَفَرَّقَ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ Then he read the verse which the shaykh used as evidence, and verily this is my straight path, so follow it, and follow not other paths, for they will separate you away from his path. This he has ordained for you, that you may become pious. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to follow the straight path and not to divide. And not to follow groups and sects and parties. Not to divide. Not, so we should not tafarraq. We should not separate into groups, into various paths. And there's no shortcuts to Jannah. The Sabil al-Mu'mineen, Sabil al-Mu'mineen is the Sabil Allah. It is the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the straight path the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet And as we mentioned in the prior dars where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاَتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِعِينَ وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا And hold on all of you steadfast to the rope of Allah and do not divide. So we've been ordered to hold on to the rope of Allah and the Mufassireen, they say that the rope of Allah, some say it's the Qur'an, some of the Salaf said it was the Sunnah, some said it was the Jama'ah, the main group of Muslims. And 
uh, meaning the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een, and those who follow them, bi ihsan, ila yawm and and other than this. And all of those, as we mentioned in other sittings, in other durus, that those various tafasir, those different explanations of of that ayat in the Quran, wa'atasimu bi habli la jami'in wa la tafarraku, that they do not contradict one another. And the ulama, they divide, they say there are different types of um, ikhtilaf or differences. And two of the main ones are ikhtilaf, uh, ikhtilaf tabad wa ikhtilaf tanawa. Ikhtilaf tabad is when the differences mean the two things contradict. For example, we have this Hizb shaitan now, or they call themselves Hezbollah, like the, the Shia, Rafida, uh, or Nasrallah, this guy in Hassan Nasrallah in, in uh, Lebanon, who's the leader of Hizb shaitan or they call themselves Hezbollah. But in fact, their creed is devilishness and based upon a type of Satanism because they worship men and they believe their imams are infallible. So this kind of difference in creed from the Aqidah of Ahl Sunnah, this is called Ikhtilaf Tabad. There's no way you can reconcile our creed and their creed. The Shia, the Shia that are the extremists like this, like Hezbollah and 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 the Ithna Ashariya, the twelve, uh, the twelvers as they call them, or the Rafida. And these Shia are so extreme, there is no there there's a contradiction between our understanding of Islam and what they consider to be Islam. It's a, there's no way you can reconcile those differences in creed. You know, if someone worships Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhum, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and someone else says, no, Ali was uh, a great Sahaba. He was from Ahl Bayt. He was, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was uh, one of the Khulafa Rashidin and who whose sunnah should be followed and that he was great and he had beautiful status in Islam, but that we don't worship him and so forth. Then these, you cannot reconcile those two differences. The Shia, Rafida, they say that, uh, some of them say that Ali, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, is, uh, is, is Allah. Meaning that he should be worshipped, and they worship him. And Ahl Sunnah says, no, Ali, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, ajmai, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, was a Sahabi. And he was from Ahl Bayt. And he has the greatest status in Islam because he was one of the four Khulafa Rashidin. He was one of the Khulafa Rashidin, al Mahdiin. Who the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnat al Khulafa Rashidin al Mahdin. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, It's upon you my sunnah, you know, follow my sunnah, and the sunnah of the rightly guided Khalifat. And the rightly guided Khalifat is Abu Bakr, wa Umar, wa Uthman, wa Ali, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in. So this is called ikhtilaf tabad, because you can't reconcile those two differences, those differences in views. Ikhtilaf to know what goes back to the tafsir of that ayat we mentioned, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, adhere to the rope of Allah, all of you together. The rope of Allah, some of the salaf said, the rope of Allah is the Quran, and some said it's the sunnah, and some said it is the uh, jama'ah. So that is ikhtilaf to know what. They, they, there's slight differences there, but those differences do not contradict one another. In fact, they strengthen one another and they support one another. And so it's safe to then say that the Hablillah is is uh, the Quran and the Sunnah and the Minhaj of the Salaf or the Sabila, the Sahaba, the Jama'at. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een. So then that is ikhtilaf to Noah. Sometimes it's just a, a difference in uh, um, al-fad, like... Um, the way statements, uh, a, diff a difference in statement, but you're basically saying the same thing. Ayul Ahbab, getting back onto the treaties, so then the Shaykh, after mentioning those ayat, he began to mention from the Sunnah the encouragement to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. and he began, he said, from the Sunnah is the long hadith of Jabir radiallahu ta'ala anhu regarding the characteristics of Hajj of the Prophet wasallam, which states, I have left you with something that if you hold on to it, you will not be misguided. 
the book of Allah. This is the statement of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this was during Hajj. And it shows us that the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam should be followed in all in its entirety. And the shahid here is that the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam said, وَقَدْ تَرَقْتُ فِيكُمْ مَا لَنْ تَضَلُّوا بَعْضُهُ أَنْ اعْتَسَمْتُمْ بِهِ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ He said, uh, I have left you with something that if you hold on to it, you will not be misguided. The Book of Allah. Showing us the importance of following the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that the Sunnah is Islam. And then the Shaykh said, also in the well-known hadith of Irbad bin Sariya, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, uh, in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I advise you to fear Allah and listen and obey to the leader, even if he were an Ethiopian slave, for verily the one who lives after me will see many differences. Therefore it is upon you, my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided uh, khalifs, or khalifat, Cling to it with your molar teeth and beware newly invented matters for every innovation is bid'ah and every bid'ah leads astray. And this is the hadith we were just mentioning uh, as well. Uh, the hadith of uh, Irbad ibn Sariya uh, radiallahu ta'ala anhu in which he said and the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal usikum bi taqullah wa sam'i wa ta'a when kana abdin habashiyan فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ يَعِيشَ مِنْكُمْ يَرَى بَعْدِ إِخْتَلَافٍ كَثِيرًا فَعَلَيْكَمْ بِسُنَّةِ وَسُنَّةَ خُلَفَاءَ الرَّاشِدِينَ الْمَهْدِينَ عَدُوا عَلَيْهَا بِالنَّوَاجِدْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَمُحْدَثَاتِ الْأُمُورِ فَإِنَّ كُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ وَإِنَّ كُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ uh, in this hadith of the Prophet وسلم, is incredibly important for us and the Shaykh used this uh, as evidence to show the importance of following the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and the sunnah of the Khulafa Rashidin. and just uh, another point I want to make in regards to this uh, hadith is also showing us uh, the uh, sinfulness of bid'ah, of religious uh, innovation, coming up with newly invented matters. Because as the Prophet ﷺ said, therefore it is upon you, my sunnah, and the sunnah of the rightly guided khalifat, uh, cling to it with your molar teeth, and beware newly invented matters, for every innovation is a bid'ah, and every bid'ah leads astray. Letting us know that bid'ah leads astray. It, it's not something which is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because you are changing the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam or changing the meaning of the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or how to practice them. Along with this, ayol ahbab, another very important is the part in the hadith where the Prophet alayhi salatu wasallam said, فَعَلَيْكُمْ sunnati." So here the Prophet alayhi salatu wasallam said, it's upon you my sunnah or it's an obligation my sunnah. Letting us know again, of course, that's an obligation, meaning it's wajib, it's something we must do. We must follow the sunnah of the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. And in addition to that, this is also a prescription for us because the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, said, فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ يَعِيشْ مِنْكُمْ And in another narration, سَيَرَى إِخْتَلَافٍ كَثِيرًا So in this narration, he said, فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ يَعِيشْ مِنْكُمْ يَرَى بَعْدِ إِخْتَلَافٍ كَثِيرًا so verily the one who lives after me will see many differences. And don't we see many differences? Don't we witness and live many differences? How much ikhtilaf between the sects and the groups and the jama'at and so forth and imams and this one. We've seen many differences. We even see differences, unfortunately, and this is a, a, a part of the treaties as we'll get to the end of this when we when we get to the end of the treaties we'll see that the sheikh was also writing this uh some of the relevance of this treaties was to encourage ahl sunnah to be to follow the sunnah and bring their differences to allah and his messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, and not follow our desires and divide and you know make tibdi of one another 
you know, without the right to do so. Especially tibdi of Ahl Sunnah. Someone is from Ahl Sunnah, their usul is from Ahl Sunnah, then their mistakes, you refute their mistakes, of course, and you invite them back to good and advise them, but it is not necessarily, uh, but you cannot uh, take them off the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Which one of us has this right to do so? We have to only, you can only do these things based on the real and based on that someone has left the methodology or the minhaj of the Salaf of this Ummah. And this is a big point of the, uh, of, of the Sheikh's treaties, as well as he's, as he's written uh, extensively on these topics as well. And uh, another point I wanted to make is so the Prophet Ali Salatu Salam said, we're going to experience a lot of differences. And then he gave us a prescription. So then he said, Fa'alaykum bi sunnati. It's upon you, my sunnah. Wa sunnata khulafa rashidin al mahdin Letting us know that the prescription, our medicine, our ilaj, our, our, um, our cure is by the sunnah of the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, and the sunnah of the rightly guided uh, khalifat. Abu Bakr wa Umar wa Uthman wa Ali radiyallahu ta'ala anu majma'in. That their sunnah as well should be followed. And this also establishes us because they make up the asal of the salaf. Is the sahaba, radiyallahu ta'ala anu majma'in, the asal of the jama'ah. They make up the asal of ahlu sunnati wal jama'ah. They make up the foundation of ahlu sunnati wal jama'ah. And the salaf is the first three generations, meaning the sahaba, the tabi'een, meaning those people who met the sahaba and maybe studied with the sahaba. They, they met sahaba, sahaba and, and they were... Um, uh, they were on Islam and they died upon Islam as Muslims and they met Sahaba, Sahaba ta'ala an then those are Tabi'een and then the Itba'a Tabi'een those people who met uh, a Tabi'i and they were uh, you know followers of them when we refer to the Salaf the Salaf as Sari, we're talking about not just someone who just met a Sahaba but you know, there are certain other conditions that they were on Islam and that they died upon Islam, that they were, you know, correct in their Aqidah because there was people from Ahl Bid'ah in those times. There was the Qadariya, there was the uh, Shia, the beginning of the Shia sect. There was also the, the Khawarij, the beginning of the Khawarij as well. So those three sects, the Qadariya, those people who denied the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Khawarij, those people who made takfir to the people for the major sins, and the, um, uh, and we mentioned the Shia as well. So those people who, some who went astray, and as is mentioned in Sahih al Bukhari, that they even worshipped Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and they, uh, uh, he burned them. And so these things show us. The importance of following the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I think we'll end uh, there until the next darsh, just to keep it brief. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ala Nabiya Muhammad, Wa Ala Ali Wa Sahbihi Wasallam.